Now the final idea we're going to be speaking about in this lecture on action potentials is going to be an idea known as action potential conduction. AP, which stands for action potential conduction, and this will be part one of two. What we're basically stating when we say conduction of an action potential is the following. This means that you're going to have a series of action potentials, APs for short, move as a signal along an axon. Move as a signal along the axon. Now the key thing I want you to notice about this definition of action potential conduction is that we're talking about a series of action potentials. Not one, but many, moving together as a signal along an axon. So how do we get to this stage and this state, I should say, of a series of action potentials when all we've established thus far is that an action potential happens? So basically what we have to sort of begin this topic is a general problem that can be solved through this process known as action potential conduction. The problem is sort of like how I already stated. An action potential happens at only one location and specifically what we mean by this at only one location on the axon. At only one location on axon. And it will travel down just that one axon. But what we want to sort of do is take that one location at which an action potential starts and move it down the whole axon. So we need to um, take this message so we need to move message, aka the action potential, aka the nerve impulse, the electrical signal, all synonyms uh, can be used interchangeably here. Need to move that message down the whole axon. Not just at one spot, but the whole axon to either the next neuron or to the effector that we're trying to respond with. How do we do this? How do we solve the problem? You solve the problem using conduction. So you use this process known as conduction. So this series of action potentials moving as a signal along the axon happens via conduction. And that's basically the answer to our problem, the solution to our problem. And conduction is shown very nicely on figure 48.12. So what we're going to do via conduction is the following. We have to understand how it starts and how it continues. What we want to do is propagate an action potential down an axon. We want the action potential, the message, as a result of shifts in membrane potential, significant shifts in membrane potential, to move down the whole axon. But again, the problem was that we begin at only one spot, and the action potential begins at a specific structure of the axon of the neuron that I should say the cytoplasmic extension part of it called the axon hillock. The axon hillock if you remember is that sort of one sort of bump right next to that risen portion right next to the cell body in which we start an action potential and over there what we want to happen is the following. We want to have a wave of depolarization we want to have this action potential which carries with it a depolarized message, a state, spread in one direction down the axon. Spreads in one direction. So now that this action potential is spreading, how do we make sure that it spreads down the whole axon and not just stay at this axon hillock region? What we notice is the following during conduction. As the voltage shifts, aka as the voltage changes from a, let's say, negative resting membrane potential state to a more positive depolarized state in one region, as voltage shifts in one region, what will happen as a result of that is that there will be a spread of voltage shifting in nearby regions, I would say. This voltage change spreads to nearby, and we'll be a little bit more specific here, sodium, uh, I should say voltage-gated, 
sodium ion channels. Now, why is this spreading happening? Remember, these are voltage gated. What we notice is a voltage shift. If we have a voltage shift in one region, the gates that are near, that are activated by voltage shifts, will certainly respond to exactly what just happened at that original region. They themselves will be activated. They will be in their open configuration. So it spreads to those nearby voltage-gated sodium channels further along the axon. Now, is this good or bad right now? This is great because we want to move this message along the whole axon, and we're certainly doing that by utilizing this sort of um, near a changing voltage, so I'm going to act as if the voltage is near me. So this is basically a response to a voltage shift in one region will cause a voltage shift in another nearby region along the axon. In essence, when you get this sort of stepwise pattern developing, you get what is known as a wave-like. So a wave propagates and moves. And so wave-like stimulation. Wave-like stimulation down the axon, just like we wanted, just like we wanted to solve the problem. This is what we're doing. We get a wave-like stimulation down the axon via voltage-gated because every single time we get the shift in voltage down the axon, the next voltage gated channel opens, and then the next one opens, and then the next one opens, you get the idea. We get this sort of buildup of channel opening. Voltage gated sodium channel openings, all in all, leading to what we wanted, leading to a continued action potential. And a continued action potential is just one that spreads in one direction down the whole axon, as opposed to staying at the axon hillock. Why is that? Because you get a wave of depolarization events due to constant voltage-gated sodium channel openings continuing and propagating uh, and promoting an action potential down the whole axon. Key thing to note about this process is that it's actually only going to happen one way. It's only a one-way stimulation event, a one-way excitatory event. Down the axon is the sort of terminology that we commonly use. We usually don't say that a message goes up the axon, meaning that it goes towards the cell body. It always goes down the axon, away from the cell body. Down the axon, away from the cell body towards, let's say, either an effector or some dendrites that can receive this message and continue to propagate it downwards to maybe a new neuron. So this idea of conduction is shown in figure 48.12. What we're going to do in the final video and look at action potentials is see this in a more uh, exemplified form in the idea of structures that will promote conduction and help action potentials do this uh, idea of moving down in a cohesive, fast manner. And that's what we'll look at in the next flowchart.